Well, this something like this doesn't happen very often, probably a handful of times over the last decade in the New York Times, or really in any paper. Generally, when people write columns and op-eds, they put their names to it. Uh, but for this level of uh, anonymity to be granted to an, an, an official, a senior administration official in the Trump administration, for them to write this is, is uh, really sort of certainly extraordinary. Failing New York Times has an anonymous editorial. Can you believe it? Anonymous. Meaning gutless, a gutless editorial. It's not clear if this person works in the White House or works closely to it. Reading the uh, the op-ed, the content of uh, of what of, of the essay, the person seems to indicate that they had first uh, first uh, a hand view to some of the, uh, the the workings of the cabinet, the workings of the West Wing. So that would give a sort of a hint to the level of seniority we're talking about. But certainly, you know, the president cares about this. The president's supporters are going to care, but they're not going. That's going to, not going to really change their thinking. That's going to animate them and feed into the narrative. Feed into the narrative that the president is already starting to drive. That there is this. Uh, uh, so, 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 uh, so-called deep state out to get him. The uh, the author of the uh, of the article says they're not a deep state. There's they're a part of a steady state that's trying to moderate his policies. But that creates this us versus them mentality that this president really uh, has has been deploying for years, and that really brought him to the White House to begin with. The notion that there are th- these people out to try to uh, thwart his agenda, thwart him from doing what he what he what he believes he was elected to do.